G'day folks. Oh, it's a wonderful day today. Never so slightly windy, really warm. Uh, well, not exceedingly warm, but well and truly warm enough for a t-shirt and shorts. I'll give you that much. <laughs> um, yeah, it's time to continue breaking up the body of this car. I'll leave the firewall section and dash as it is as the last bit, but today, now that I've tidied up the yard, I'm going to separate the windscreen and cut right across there probably even do a cut across there and just break that off into one separate unit for disassembly there's not much else to see on this apart from dismantling the rear end but I'll probably do that after I can rotate it backwards and stand it on the back end or upside down and should be right yeah there's not a lot of structure in here it's all just sheet metal reinforced with a few braces and things but these monobody cars are entirely dependent on structure shape and small braces and things so yeah they can be as thin as a tin can but incredibly strong like some of these cars are pretty tough when it comes to normal everyday wear and tear you don't see them bending without serious collision, in, collision damage and that's where these cars do fail they don't stack up very well in a crash but that's what you get, you get what you pay for. <laughs> Cheap car, not a lot of safety, what can I say? So anyway, I'm gonna cut through down there. I might even get the saws all out because there's nothing in there. That's just hollow space. So I'll get the saws all out and cut it at an angle, both sides, after putting a jack under the, the bottom of it, of course, so it doesn't close up on the saw blade. And then get the nine inch out and just run right across there and it should part that off nice and easy. Uh, before you do any of this sort of thing at home, if you are trying to break up a car body that's stuck in your backyard, which is essentially what this is, it's just stuck in my backyard, I can't get it out without breaking it up. So, take the fuel tank out and blow any fuel out of the lines with compressed air. Even purge them out with water if you have to, or degreaser and water. Just make sure there's no, no um, combustible solvents in the vehicle when you start cutting, because, uh, yeah, cut through the fuel lines if it starts bleeding fuel everywhere on fire this thing's going to go up like mad so yeah you don't want that in your backyard unless you're set up for it if you're on a farm or something you might as well just put a match to it anyway but if you're uh, in suburbia like me car fires kind of get unwanted attention and uh, I don't want that so yep that's what we're doing today I'm going to try and get under there and uh, split that adhesive off and take the whole windscreen off as one piece I don't want to have to run the 9 inch across there anymore because it's just throwing chips everywhere. It's bad enough I've got to sweep the, uh, sweep the hard packed dirt. This whole area is just going to get a full clean up and magnetic sweep. Drag a few big bar magnets over it. <laughs> we don't want the other little cars picking up uh, bits of scrap metal in their tyres. Especially not you because you're going back on the road again. You're not. I don't care so much. <laughs>
almost there. <laughs> Well, I just got to pull it back far enough to cut the uh, park brake cable and whatever else that is. I think it's a, uh, well, it's reinforced, it's not a vapour return hose, it's probably another brake cable or something. Yeah, park brake cables, probably two individual ones. Just got to cut them and voila, car is in half. <laughs> Well, that's how you do that. <laughs> that's half a car. As you can see, all the cross sections. And the stand that I wedged between it to get it far enough apart and just cut the uh, brake, park brake cables. I probably could have used them, but I wasn't going to be bothered climbing under here trying to unscrew all those rusty old screws. I just cut them all off, punch those bolts out of the uh, subframe mounts, the um, beam axle mounts and uh, yeah, drop the uh, axle out of it. But as you can see it's all based on uh, layers of sheet metal. It's almost like bulkheads in a ship or um, hull linings. <laughs> I was just watching uh, Modern Marvel's uh, industrial disasters and yeah the Exxon Valdez was a bit of a mess. Thankfully this one didn't end up like that with oil everywhere. There's a little bit of brake fluid weeping out of the uh, metal lines, but that's a water glycol based thing. Some kind of glycol. Makes good weed killer, I'll give it that much. <laughs> but yeah, I generally clean and wipe up most, if not all, uh, little spills and things. It just makes the area nasty. It's not good. So, yep. That is how you cut a car in half. Looks like the floor pan is two or three layers in places. That's not just one layer, that's two, there's three in there. Oh yeah, th it's the end of that reinforcing member. I missed all that stuff by cutting close to the rear shelf there. Firewall, I guess you'd call it. Hmm. It's interesting stuff. Okay, well, underneath all I'm doing is disconnecting brake lines, handbrake cable, and uh, that bolts out, that one's almost out and all essentially I've got to do is turn it upside down. I couldn't get the top end nuts off the shockers undone but they're shot anyway so I just cut them off with the grinder. Uh, not much worth keeping under here apart from the um, axle beam but I'm going to strip that clean on the top anyway and just weld a tray top to it, make it into a little uh, workshop trolley probably a metre by a metre square or something like that with these tyres on it should be pretty good good for even bulky stuff like air conditioners and engines and things the rest of this stuff can go scrap bin well that's how you do that bit <laughs> I don't advise anyone try this in their backyard there's a fair bit of work in it Although, granted it's not a four wheel drive there'd be a lot more bits to that one but yeah Coil springs, not much else. But that's where the um, rear axle assembly pivots with rubber bushings, spring mount, and shock absorber mount up through there. That's all dirt. <laughs> Been slung off the tyre in a particular pattern, airflow and 
um, turbulence creates that. We probably could have regained another 5 or 10 horsepower just by cleaning all the crap out of this car. <laughs> it's all just mud and dirt. <laughs> Put back there, that went to fuel tank, I think. Yeah, fuel pump and everything was on the other end of this. That went to carbon canister, that's filler, that's breather, that's fuel something. No, that's carbon canister, that one and vacuum or whatever that is. I think that's just vents to in there. Just atmosphere. The others, what others are fuel, and the two small ones are brake lines. So you've got brake line. I'll grab that rigid line because it's got a coupling and another fitting on it. That one there is not. It's severed, so I'll leave that. Yeah, easy enough. It's got to sort of get one corner up onto the trailer and shove it on there. <laughs> Fairly. It's not extremely heavy. But yeah, that's the other side where the coil spring sits. Shock absorbers. Like I said, I had to cut the nuts off them. Shock absorbers are not gas charged and they're not spring loaded. As you can see, it stays in position. It does work, but they're a bit tired. Although it's not leaking. There's just a piston, a series of orifices through the piston and a charge of oil so as it travels it tries to displace oil from one side of the piston to the other and it creates a well a shock absorber effect that's exactly what it is brake drum brakes you've seen me work on them before a bit of a pain <laughs> I'll be glad to be not using them I think I'll just lighten it up by taking the guts out of them top bushing fairly flogged out and some nice washers I'll keep the washers the rest of it can come off and go in the bin anyway guess I better get this onto the trailer alright well the rear half's on the trailer and I finally got the screen off Fairly tenacious adhesive, but an old boning knife, slaughterhouse knife, and a heat gun made it a lot easier. I tried just heat and melted a lot of the plastic and stuff, but at the end of the day, it was just a matter of wedging, wedge the knife in like that, and just sort of walk it along. It's very flexible, so just walk walk the tip of the blade along, and away she came. I'll get the. Uh, dry back out and suck all this stuff up so it doesn't end up in the ground. There's a lot of little fragments and things. It was a bit messy. But that's out. That's the pillar. <laughs> I've cut all that previously. Oh, I might have got a bit carried away with the saws all again. <laughs> there goes the uh, centre part of the floor pan. That's all I was using. Spray a bit of uh, oil over it, a bit of inox or something like that, and away she goes. Not a big deal. <laughs> the battery in the motor's nice and warm, but it's not hot. It definitely doesn't smell hot. The motor's still fresh and clean inside. It's not black or damaged. It's a nice tool. 18 volt lithium. So, my points didn't line up exactly, so I'll just get the 9 inch grinder and just sink it through there a bit and sever this part, run lengthways and split it in two, and then continue, uh, cut through there, cut through the uh, crumple zone member, the uh, chassis rail, I don't think this will manage it, but I'll uh, probably just use the 9 inch, I'll salvage all these brake lines first, even get the uh, steering rack end, tie rod ends and everything out. I'll take the whole tie rods out. Yeah. 
so I can uh, get this lock washer off. I'll be able to unbolt these and remove them. That's all part of the steering rack. Um, yeah, I'll remove all these joiners and metal lines. Remove the refrigerant line. Uh, where's a high side valve? I need a high side service valve for my uh, gauge set, just as a dummy. Oh, there we go. No, sorry, low side. I've already got a high side. I need that, and I'll just cut a thread on the inside and screw it to the side of my gauge set because the uh, quick release refrigerant fittings to go on there don't have anything to actually fit onto on the gauge set. It's kind of a, it was a fairly cheap unit, but I'm going to make my own so I can just clip them onto the side of the gauge and keep dust out of them because at the moment they just sit open. And then there's the map sensor for Alex 993CC1. You can have that, including the uh, connector and loom. I'll cut what I can out of the loom so you can connect it fairly easily. Um, yeah, the gear shift assembly off the uh, gearbox is allocated to somebody as well, so we'll get into that later. That's another whole big can of, wor can of worms on its own. Hmm. Either way, slowly getting to pieces. I just got to, uh, you know, get most of the way through this and then move the uh, RAV4 in for a bit of a wash down. I haven't given it a thorough clean or detail since I've got it, so I want to go over it and just see what the paint's like. I know the hood's got a lot of scratches in it. It's going to take a while to clean that up, but for a two and a half thousand dollar car, I'm not going to complain. I guess it's sort of why people were criticising me, or a couple of people were wondering why. I was scrapping this car because it wasn't, it's all straight, it's not full of rust or anything like that and well it's just expensive to keep them on the roads. I've said it plenty of times before, Australian roadworthy standards are pretty screwed. I mean they keep the real bad rust buckets off the road but they also uh, send a lot of decent cars which have very little wrong with them to scrap which is essentially what I'm doing here, I'm just turning this thing into scrap metal. It's uh, kind of a shame but that's what happens. That's uh, politics and paperwork and nanny state tactics for you. And Victoria really is a nanny state, I'll give them that much. It's a nice place to live, but apart from, well, apart from the nanny state approach to pretty much everything. So, yeah, Australia's a nice place to come and live, but don't expect complete freedom or anything like that. Definitely not as nice as America. I know some people will argue against that. <laughs> the comment section's going to go nuts, but to be honest, there's a lot of parts of America I love. I'd love to live there for a while. I don't know if I'd stay there permanently, but um, yeah, what can I say? All right, well, got the brake line flare fittings and everything off, and the uh, refrigeration fittings for air conditioning. They're all bolted connections, and O-rings to seal them. Pretty easy. Just undo the bolts and studs and things and pull it apart. That's the evaporator core through the firewall. Fuel filter bracket. I'll take that off and keep it because I've got a spare filter for one of these. Um, loom, I'll just cut a section out and Alex can join it however he wants. That's for the map sensor. Wiper motor's kind of handy. Um, Andy, photonic induction, photon vids. I uh, just used one as a rotary camera mount, it's actually quite effective. So yeah, they're worth getting, if that's the kind of thing you want to do. Power steering rack's going to come out as one whole unit, that's easy. There's one, two, three, four bolts holding that in place with rubber mounts. The rubber mounts are still good. I could probably leave these tie rods and everything on there as it is. Although I've removed the uh, steel plate, wherever that went. Um, yeah. But I do have to disconnect the steering column first, I think. So I might just cut, take these off, cut through here with the 9 inch and just lighten this whole front bit up as a package unit and then get back to it later. Because I've already cut through there. I've just got to cut through these main thick steel members right through there and that'll lighten this up and we should be right to go I'll cut all this stuff off sway bar, D bushings yeah they're pretty average 
but again four bolts there's two here two here and should be able to pull the sway bar through from one end or both ends yeah that's just a big spring it's a torsion spring you can see where brake fluids leaked onto it and destroyed the powder coating that's what that is one of the fittings up here is weeped down here to uh, destroy the powder coating brake fluids very good at stripping paint I'll give it that much <laughs> Stripping paint and killing weeds, that's what it's good for. And stopping your car when you want it to. Clutch slave cylinder and brake, sorry, clutch master cylinder, slave cylinders on the box. So master pushes the uh, slave cylinder, brake master cylinder and vacuum operated booster. We'll uh, try and tear that apart as well. Yeah, there's some cool bits in here. Not many bits left, but they're here. <laughs> but for now, I want to cut this off both sides. There we go. Now it's lightened up. <laughs> That's all split apart. Just got to sever the loom. And the uh, front members are completely dismembered. <laughs> not a lot in them. It's all to do with geometry that absorbs all the impact. Shapes, forces, physics, well yeah. I won't bore you with physics lessons but it is interesting stuff. There's a gearbox mount. Still yeah, somewhat okay. It's not cracked out and falling apart. <laughs> anyway, that'll do for today. Thanks for watching.